to help support this podcast and get exclusive bonus content and rewards, make a monthly pledge at patreon.com slash universe box. And, and remember, remember to, to think, think outside. outside tonight on universe box Four seasons of Gilmore, the final four words and special guest Alex from what the fangirl. This is universe box. I remember you punk. Did I step into 2003? I'm Anne-Marie D. Simone, and this is the Universe Box Special for Gilmore Girls, A Year in the Life. This is about the four 90-minute episode miniseries that Netflix just released at 3 a.m. Eastern Time today, and we are wrapping up the life of our favorite fast talkers in Stars Hollow and beyond. This is your spoiler warning. There will be spoilers. We will talk about those last four words ad nauseum because they were pretty crazy and important. So... Now, as you may have noticed, nope, that way is not my usual co-host, but never fear. I have an amazing, amazing guest host to help talk about everything Gilmore. Hello, Alex. How are you? Hello. How are you? I am excellent. Are you exhausted from watching six hours of Gilmore Girls today? I am, but I'm so happy that that is my level of exhaustion. It's Gilmore Girls exhaustion. It's fantastic. It's perfect. You have to talk super, super fast and yay. Um, so have you always been a Gilmore fan? Did you watch it the first time around? I did. I did. I did not. This is not something I like streamed later. I watched it as it happened. Uh And there's not that many shows I can say that about anymore. So I was like, it took me like a year to become a super fan. And then I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. I remember watching it back in the day with my mom once in a while, but not (laughs) necessarily all the time. And I think my love of it grew over time, actually, as I became a mom. And then I would just start, like, stream, like watching the series. Yeah. And once it came to Netflix, it, it was all downhill. It was just, I think I've watched it three times since it's been on Netflix. I have an addiction problem. It happens. So we have a bunch of points here to talk about, but we're going to go with... So much. So much. So much. <laughs> um, first, we have some that we filled out before... Can you hear me a little better now? Um, Before we watch the show. So, um, Alex, what storyline were you most excited about? I was excited about Lorelai because I was thinking, you know, Rory was going out, conquering the world, and Lorelai was stuck in in Stars Hollow. And I'm pretty, I, I like Luke, but I was always sort of iffy on it. So I was like, well, this could be really interesting to see what she does next. I, as, as much as I love the girls and I love everything about the girls, I could not wait to see what happened with the boys because mm-hmm. there is so many boys in these two's life that it's crazy yes. to see um, all of their interactions with and without the girls. So I thought that was one of the most exciting things to see happen. Um, we also had another person who was supposed to be hosting with us, but she was having internet issues and was not going to be able to finish in time. <laughs> she was only partially into her first rewatch and was like, there's just not time. My internet gives up. I'm like, I'm sorry. So, Dad. yeah, I feel, I feel awful. I was like, yep, we're going to just cut you loose. Go ahead. Thanks. We'll watch it later. <laughs> um, but that was Liz from Greetings from Storybrooke. She she, um, she was looking forward to seeing Luke and Lorelai's re- relationship. And I think I w- am too, but I was like, eh, they were never my favorite. <laughs> Either. But we'll talk about that. Yeah. I, I like the way it was left. But yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so what were your expectations going in? When we last saw the girls, Rory was headed out on the campaign trail with Barack Obama and Lorelai fell back into the arms of Luke. So what do you think happened next? Where are the girls going to be? You know, I really expect, uh, when when I sat down to think about it, I was like, I think Rory probably divorced someone, married and divorced someone horrible like Logan. Mm. (laughs) I thought Logan was. So I was like, I think she did that. And I think she was in politics for a while and then maybe was going to go back to school. That's kind of like what my little feeble mind can come up with. Right. And then. And with Lorelai and Luke, I just assumed they were still together, but just sort of by default. I wasn't like a huge, I didn't hate the last season of the show, but I didn't think it was like perfect either. So, Well, I, I know that they weren't talking much about uh, the last season of the show basically didn't exist. 
no, no. in this world because Amy and Dan Palladino never watched it. They weren't involved, so they were like, it doesn't exist to us. And I'm kind of okay with that. Ew. I'm kind of okay because that last season, like, you don't realize if you're marathoning it that it was different because it just, you, the episodes just keep playing. But when you look back, you're like, oh, oh, yeah, that's that's a difference. So um, I, going in, my expectations was that I was going to cry a lot, but then yeah. I was going to feel very, very happy. Very happy in the end. Um, the anticipation for these episodes has been so strong. And yeah. while I know they're the last ones, which really makes me sad because I kind of just want it to keep going forever. I know. It's, it's one I know. of those shows. You just want it to keep going and going and going like Grey's <sighs> Anatomy because it just will never end or The Simpsons. But, um, you know, based off of all the excessive amounts of promos, it looked like both of the girls were going to be a little bit upset with where they were. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, help. this was going to help them figure everything out. This is going to be this magical year, 2016, I guess. So... Let's see if we were right about anything. Um, Did you worry at all about whether it could meet your expectation level? Yes, absolutely. Because I was thinking the same as you. I was like, I think I'm going to cry, and I hope I'm going to be overjoyed, but usually that just fails. But exactly. I, I was like, oh, please don't let this be that thing. Right. It's it, There was just so much anticipation. Like, I know with... Um, Nope. There's been other shows that Netflix has revived that people are like, you know, it was good, but it wasn't as good as the original. And it, it's always hard to meet those expectations of a world we've lived in for 15 years and just wanted more. So, um, as we said, this is was done in four 90-minute um, episodes. Each was a season, winter, spring, summer, and fall. And so the first one that we are going to discuss is winter. Would you like to give us your first point? Winter. Okay. So first of all, I thought it was a perfect way to open because they had like a whole 10 minute thing and it was a tour of the town. And I was like, oh, I'm transported right back into this. And I really could hear the difference in the writing. I was like, yep, this is it. This is it. This is them. And I, so I, that was like my first gut reaction was like, oh, this is great. I had a lot of feels and emotions about Richard being dead. Oh, I knew I, but, you know, I saw it in the, in the trailer. I was like, yeah, okay. There's the painting. It was still really emotional. I was kind of surprised by like that. And part of me, I was like looking at the actresses and thinking, oh, you had to go through this and this is so weird and had to be hard. Right. I, I kind of think that all of the funeral and everything was done just as much for the actors as for the audience. Like, I think they needed that time to grieve on screen together. As weird as that, like those characters, not even just the actresses needed that. It was, it was closure for them. So it it was done beautifully though. It was done beautifully. And I liked that it was messy because that Lorelai screwed up with the memorial. It's what she does. (laughs) It's what she does. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is why I like this show. They never really show, it's never like a straight line, like, and now we're fine and we're perfect. And I, I think, that I, I was like, yeah, well, of course, Lorelai screwed that up. And that then I knew that this was going to be rough. Yeah, it, it was going to be real. It, yeah. Because nothing, that, nothing is a straight, clean line in reality. So why should it be on TV? So No, and um, not grieving, especially not grieving. It's no. like always watch movies and tv and then they like they grieve and then it's over this straight through to the end and i thought that was great yeah um one of the things that i thought was really entertaining from the first episode was luke being super proud luke he was super proud of everything especially with rory's accomplishments which made me hysterical because every time lorelei would say super proud was super proud with spirit fingers Yes. It was fantastic. He, he's the dad she never really had. And this is exactly what a dad would do. He would order six cases of the New Yorker to pass out to anyone and everyone. He would put it on the back of the menu. He got a new menu just to put her article there. I was like, this is Luke. This is I like, know. This I is know. Luke. And then I was like, oh, why am I not feeling Luke? Because I was like, oh, he loves Rory and he put it on the menu. And I was like, oh, I'm so happy for her. Yeah. So then I was like, okay, yeah, they didn't settle. Maybe they did settle, but maybe they're good. They're a good match. So I calmed down because right. I never 
never in perfectly in tune with that, I don't think. Right. I've always liked um, Rory and Luke more than Luke and Lorelai. Like, yeah. I've always liked their father-daughter relationship better than the romantic relationship. For some reason, it felt more, I don't know, real and happy. Less drama. <laughs> Significantly less drama. Less crankiness, yeah. Definitely less crankiness. Uh, but, you know, speaking of people that were cranky, we got Paris. We got good old Paris. <laughs> And she is still that cranky bee that she always has been. Um, I love that she finally figured out a way to balance being a doctor and a lawyer. Do I go to med school? Do I go to law school? What do I do? Well, you become a reproduction <laughs> ther or a specialist and you do surrogacy and you handle the adoption. Like you handle everything. I was like, that was fantastic. And she was absolutely perfect in that yes. role to me it was the perfect thing for her and then i didn't expect to get as much paris as we got and right. i was like oh God, this is so entertaining you exactly. know like she she just killed it and when she went into the bathroom at the school <laughs> <killed me. laughs> that's the door closed i was like yes this yes. is great that was fantastic i okay. i would love to see a spinoff of her office I, know, right? I would love to see it if she wasn't on how to get away with murder right now shonda rhymes would really need to make paris's baby factory show totally because it'll be so good it's gonna have just enough drama for her it was perfect it was so and it was such a great idea and then i loved the storyline a little bit because i was like i kind of liked that rory suddenly had that seed of doubt and then luke was like well yeah i said that was the kid there was the kid I, uh, you know we could have had a kid so i didn't even hate the way they brought they they brought that to a conclusion it was fun so there was something that you absolutely hated, though, in this first episode. There was something. I mean, it's a carried on theme for a few episodes. But seeing as how your point is no, uh, would you care to I, elaborate a little? Logan. No, Rory, no. 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 And I mean, I had trouble with Logan the first time. He's cute, you know, when the show was on. I liked him on A Good Life. I'm, I'm not even saying there wasn't a little bit of goodwill from his other show, but the whole first episode, I was like, not this. No, he's with, he's with another woman and you're, oh no, I cannot. Yeah. You're still going for this? You're 32 years old? So I did want to throw something at, at the TV. Yeah, I did and not like their Vegas relationship. It was not a what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. It never, never could be with Rory. Never. And I don't think it can be with Logan either. He even, most, yeah. No. No, and the no strings attached thing is such an overdone thing. With them. And most people, yeah, and I'm like, okay, but this is never, no. So I, I, I had a bad feeling that, that there was going to be some heartbreak coming up. Yeah. Of course it was going to be Logan, but no, he was there for all four episodes. Anyone yeah, who I was not happy about that uh, excessive Logan action. Excessive, it was, maybe it's because he had the most availability because he's the only one without a hit show. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> I'm like, since The Good Wife ended uh, and Milo has a brand new show that's fantastic and, well, Dean's a Winchester, so, which got name checked. I know. I, that was the great. amount of name checks in this, like, I didn't even put a spot for it because I didn't know to anticipate it. There was the Winchesters. There was this sick amount of pop-up chefs throughout all of the shows and the name check, like Ina Gardner, Sandra Lee, Anthony Bourdain, David Chang, Roy Choi, Rachel Wright. I was like, this is insane and fantastic for the foodie in me. I didn't even know any that this was going to happen. I was like, are you kidding me for real? How did this not leak out? Or maybe I really have been making myself stay away from the new. I don't know. I think but somehow I blocked it all out. Yeah. Because I didn't want spoiled. And I usually am okay with it. But I didn't want spoiled on this. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that blew my mind. So, in the first, like you said, you know, I think one of your notes is not a lot of plot really happens the first 90 minutes. No. You're just, okay, we're revisiting everybody. It's, it's getting you back into the feel of things. Yeah. And I think that's really all that first episode was. Now, Spring, on the oh. other hand, went a little bit more in depth. So, one of the very first things that you get, well, not very first, it's the first half. Mr. Kim makes an appearance. I know, I couldn't believe it. 
I, I've seen lots of the speculation on the internet as to whether Mr. Kim would finally make an appearance because he's referred to all the time. All the time. And he was a throwaway. Never it. it never made sense. Oh. He wasn't there at Thanksgiving and weddings and all of that. But gosh darn it, if he doesn't make an appearance. However related, that food international food festival was the usual hot mess. <laughs> you are now these three countries. You are now these three countries. I'm like, dude, we need you to back oh. off a little oh. bit. Definitely not. But never. The only thing that actually did make me mad was that they threw the bit of basket into that ex that whole scene. It, yeah. was, it was it was too much. I'm like, the bit of basket is way too important to be a throwaway yeah, I know. of jokes. It was just a throwaway joke, and that made me no. very sad. Yeah, I was disappointed. I was like, you're really going to do, you're really going to bring this up and then just have it be, here's a joke, and here's a joke in pie. I was like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. So was, spring felt really, that was the hardest one for me to watch, and I'm not sure why. Well, I think I know why. Well, okay. well, why? Why do you think it was? Um, Rory was super annoying in this whole episode, and I like wanted to reach through the screen and, and grab her at one point and shake her. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I think that was the point. We were supposed to be like, why are you so adrift, Rory? God. Right. But, I mean, what did you think it was about her that was so rootless in the spring? Oh, she was living freelance life, and she just couldn't make it work. Well... <laughs> The problem is she always, always, always wants top tier or nothing. Yes. Like the girl needs to get on Upwork and take some little jobs to get by so she can buy some new underwear. Right. Because that should not have been an ongoing storyline. No. Under any circumstances, finding her underwear should not have been an ongoing storyline. So spoiler on that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just like. It really is an ongoing storyline. It really is. That and finding a special dress. Um, but I even found her completely annoying with the, the lines article when oh. she took on that for Condé Nast after having Mitchum Huntsberger call in a favor, which right there is enough to like oh. irk me for days. Um, she, she takes on this lines article of lines in New York. People just line up for things. I'm like, first of all, that's very, very dumb, um, as an art, as a story. But it gave us Mae Whitman as an appearance. Yeah. Which made me happy to see Lauren Graham in the middle of the two of them. Because yeah. that's just perfect. She has her girls. Which was cool. Yeah. It, it was nice. There were, there were some other parenthood uh, appearances later in the season, too. Or in the episodes. Did you yeah, get those ones? Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. Yes. The and two is what really surprised me. Yes, so I was really shocked. Yeah. And I, I so I like that. I would never want to read an article about people standing in line. No. Obviously no. I don't line up at eleven PM to go to Best Buy to buy a TV, so I don't get it. Right. I don't get any of it. Right. But I uh, and Rory I I wanna say this to all millennials too, because I love you guys. You're so passionate about things. <laughs> you used to be thoughtful about things, but I'm I thought they did a great job of putting Rory there because super high super high achiever and they want to start kind of like way up here where their dream level is. And sometimes it's like, you got to start down here right. where everything sucks. And that's how you get up exactly. here. Exactly. And, you can't start at the top. You can't. Yeah. And I also thought I was like, well, this is sort of makes sense for her character because she doesn't want to make the big giant mistake that in a way her, she feels like her mother made. Right. So I thought it was, it was, but it was hard to watch. It, it was, was like, okay, was really very hard to watch. No, Yeah. no, again, no. Oh, no, Logan. However, another no to Rory was no Wookiee. No <laughs> Wookiee. Like, big, fat, Wookiee humping loser. Right? Oh, Rory. First of all, how did you make it to 32 without having a one-night stand? She was out on the on the campaign trail. She should have had <laughs> gotten that out of her system 15 years ago. But a yeah. Wookiee? Ugh. It, his Wookiee suit, maybe even. Oh, I'm pretty sure he was still in the Wookiee suit. Oh God! Or at least the he the head. Oh, yeah, uh, no, uh, it's so bad. It was, so, and I was like, "Is this a cheap?" I was like, "This is kind of a cheap joke at the expense of the nerd crowd." But I was like, "I am going to allow I'm it." Kind of okay with it. 
<laughs> I was kind of okay with that, but yeah, oh, yeah. so bad, so bad. So yeah. Another thing that happened throughout spring was a lot of these therapy sessions. How did those work for you? I think I liked them more after they got through some of the comedic relief part of it. And then at the end, I kind of liked it more when things came to a head. The only thing is, and I mean, this, I guess, makes sense, but they didn't really resolve anything between mother and daughter. No, not a thing. (laughs) And I was like, well, this makes sense. Somebody was going to storm out. And so that was kind of a disappointment in a way. But I love the fact that, that Lorelai got suckered into the therapy. I thought was was great. It was <laughs> I love a, it. Was definitely something she needed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> many many moons ago, as Jess points out <laughs> later. Yes, yeah. exactly right. And then it was kind of cool though that okay, the seeds were planted in the therapy that they had issues. But then you know you don't always get it if you're in therapy. Then later on you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, the the light <laughs> goes on. Like me and Luke may not, you know, maybe this is not all that healthy. Right. Yeah, I those therapy sessions sort of became boring to me a little after a while. Like, I think we had like two too many. Yeah, because we yeah, kept that's- cutting back to it. I'm like, it is the same scene with like three different words. It was, and, I was like, I don't need. Yeah. And that is why only I think only the spring episode I was like going, do we need a 90 minute episode? I'm not sure. That I, I kind of was unsure at that point. I thought there had to be something better. It felt a little fillery or a little slow. So that was probably the episode that I just didn't feel the most. You know, I was like, okay, right. I can't. See, I actually felt that way about summer. Mm-hmm. Um, for something you have as a point here later. So I'm, we're just going to jump to the Stars Hollow musical. <laughs> there was too much of the musical. There I was didn't a- need to see the entire musical in the episode. Like on my rewatch, I was like, okay, that shaved off 15 minutes or so. Like the song at the end was very good. It was nice and it made sense. But I did not need to see scene by scene the musical rehearsals. What do you think? It went on and on. And I loved it. And it was really funny. And then afterwards, they sat down in a circle. And then they critiqued the musical. And that went on right on and I was like okay 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 but this isn't really central to the plot and as much as I love shows with no plot and lots of dialogue at a certain point we have to move it along and I did there were several references to to her other show Bunheads in here and I still feel that Amy is just like damn it I should have this show this show was so good it was going to be better than Gilmore Girls which it was that good right but let it go because this really wasn't the place for it but I thought it was hysterical but man it was long it was really long it was really really long and you know I I am a musical theater I'm a theater geek it's it's my degree is in theater like but it was just too much I like I get it it's quirky but we get that also with you know Kirk's video and uh, yes there's a sequel to Kirk's video from the first (laughs) from the original series we it's just as crazy. But yeah, I, di- I didn't need all that. However, things I did like was the secret bar. Big oh fan God. of the secret bar. I'm so glad you brought that up. I, it was like how, first of all, what happened to the other bar that had karaoke that was like standard. But it was really fun that everybody knew exactly what to do when they heard that Taylor was coming by. They... Um, you know, we ha- see Zach and Lane playing in the corner since their kids are like 12 now and they can, s- can stay home by themselves, which we did not get enough of them either. There was, no, there was not enough of those kids. Yeah, I, I was surprised by that. But it was it was cool that they actually had like, here's some more stars, hollow quirkiness mm-hmm. that you didn't know about. And they were going to put out there. And I was like, I love this. It made right. me look kind of fall in love with it all over again. And yeah. And I mean, I know some people think, okay, this is a little too twee for me. I can't handle it. Right. I really like that. And I think it's a tough mix to, to do when you're like, I'm going to do a quirk overload. Um, no. Right. But they did a great job with that. That was amazing. Yeah. Why, why can't we see the kids? That's a good question. I don't know. Especially because we get those two boys that hold the umbrellas for them in this episode and follow them around and carry all this stuff. They were the exact same age as the twins. Well, yeah. They'd have been perfect for it. But they got two scenes or something. So that was kind of sad. Um, I forgot to mention, we do actually have a chat room over at live.universebox.com. And Monica and Mom are over there. And they said, 
yeah, the musical could have been lost. And yeah, it pretty much could have. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, yeah, Netflix is so awesome because you can do whatever you want, but you still need an editor. <laughs> yeah, the, the editing still needs. Well, yeah. in the first episode was Amy. The middle two were Dan. And the last episode is Amy. And I think it was very obvious. Oh, yeah. The difference. Yep. Uh, I kind of wish they'd have collaborated a little more on the entire thing. I think that might have helped because I think she has the editing hand that he doesn't a little bit with stuff like that. That's a good point. It might have been smoother because mm -hmm. then once I got back to Paul, I was like, this is really great. Mm -hmm. You know, the way the thing, the arc of it was pretty much perfect to me. Yeah. Okay. So there were some Superman references you wanted to talk about. There were two of them, yeah. I think. There was at least two. I was confused by the comic book references in general. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? Right. But they, they did. She did make a reference to Perry White, which I loved. Mm -hmm. And then there was another one that would involve the phone booth. Yeah, the phone booth where he's going to save him from Ben Affleck. Yes, and I loved that. That was great. And she took, and they take a, a great shot at Marvel. And I am not really one or the other. All I'm saying is I rant all the time every time I see a Marvel movie that. Okay, I've just I get to the parking lot. And I'm like, what did I just watch? What? What was that? I yeah, it just goes. Yeah. I for me, it's not memorable. So they took a, a kind of a little sideburn, little shade, and I liked it. Yeah, I, I can't lie. I agree. Was... Yeah. Uh, so this episode, however, the summer episode had a lot of fighting, like an excessive yeah. amount of fighting, and it reminded me of the dark times where nobody was speaking and people yes. were living in a pool houses and all sorts of drama was happening. So this time we had Rory fighting with Lorelai, Lorelai fighting with Emily, Lorelai fighting with Luke. Poor Lorelai just needs a vacation to a spa, which coincidentally Michelle would like to be running in New York City. But she needed to go away, which we see set up at the end of this episode that she's like, I'm out. I, I'm, I'm going wild. And... That was really weird, but it kind of worked. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised they pulled it off in a way that mm -hmm. actually she was going to do the wild thing. Yeah. I was like, really? Okay. But it it worked. Um, it made sense for me because I really wanted Lorelai to finally get a break and say, wait a minute. I'm trying to kind of keep everybody even keeled all the time, and I am tired. Mm -hmm. Like, I wanted her to have that breakdown. That was good. I, it's interesting you brought up how, you know, the last time they were all not talking, which I kept thinking, oh, this is going on so long. Mm -hmm. And there was times during this that it felt that way. But in the end, I think it was it was worth it and it made sense. But, oh, my God, I was like, are you referring to the movie in the book Wild? I can't believe they're going to do this. I wasn't really sure what was going to happen with her and Luke at that point. And maybe I just was like, I drank the Kool-Aid. I was buying whatever. the Because I really did think maybe they'll break up. Right. Um, but maybe I'm just a sucker. <laughs> I really believed it, too. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. There, I was entertained to see her leave. Or, like, to actually go. Which happens in fall. It's exactly where we start. And um, I have, I mean, I am surprised that I've actually seen Wild. Because it's not my type of thing. I just happen to like Reese Witherspoon. That first scene was very much like the movie. And I thought it was almost too much like the movie was like a different thing yeah and it was dark and I was like is this whole episode gonna be this yeah I, I didn't yeah. like being taken out of stars hollow the stars hollow New York London area because we don't get that very often ever in the show mm -hmm. minus that one awful California episode just come home please uh, uh. So, uh, <laughs> yeah so. but during fall the final episode um, we get the return of the Life and Death Brigade. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. made me really, really, really happy. Mm -hmm. um, they've always, like, as much as I don't like her and Logan, I like her and the Life and Death Brigade. As weird as that might sound. Like, I love Finn and Colin and Robert. Like, I oh, need them fun. just to follow her around and take her on adventures and forget him. Let him right. go have a debt. The scene, they, to me, the whole, all of the, those scenes felt very out of place, but they were also so enjoyable mm -hmm. because I'm watching this and I'm like, I love the spectacle of this. It is something that like they could do a little bit on Bunheads more because they had dancing and singing. 
And I just, I, I love watching them. I wish that it wasn't a big chunk out of this episode for me. I was like, oh, do I have to sit through this? But then I'm, those guys are really funny. Right. And if I had to pick between watching them and then watching Logan, like, schmooze her again, I would pick them every time. Yeah. I, I, so I just, I, no. Yeah, seeing them show up with the, the masks and all the little things throughout the day was really neat to see. You know, like, the get ready and her going, hey, old person, did you touch my computer and try and send an email? Like, that that was the type of stuff that I always liked, was those yeah. little little things that you're like, what is going on? And again, the people the people were making appearances I never thought they would be in the show. And I was like, okay, I'm going to give you props for working in just about every person you could. They really did. Like, the amount of townsfolk that were yeah. throughout all of them. And it, really was, it was not just, like, one or two episodes. Like, the troubadour was only in the first episode. But you had the whole town the whole time. The whole time. The whole time. <laughs> so, um, however, Emily took quite a weird journey. I thought in this yep. last, like actually through the whole thing, but really in this last episode, and I'm not sure how I felt about it. It kind of made me uncomfortable. Um, it's weird. It's interesting. Yeah. She, I. <laughs> yeah, she just think? sort of takes in this entire family. Like we're used to every time we go to the Gilmore house, there's a new maid. Through this entire thing, there's one maid who no one knows how to talk to and slowly her whole family moves in and takes up jobs and does things. And Emily's tucking the kids in at night, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Hey, can you hear me? I can. Welcome back. Uh, computer malfunction, right? When I wanted to hear what you had to say about that storyline. Um, which one was I speaking of? We were talking about... The weird turn that Emily's story took at the end. Yes, yes. In winter or in fall. Fall. Yeah, where she moves to Nantucket and starts working at the Whaling Museum as a Paris-like dossier. That was crazy, but so perfect. Because, I... Well, in college, she was a history major. So she had that bit of her in her. This was her first chance to have a job basically I take it you didn't like that so much yeah for me it was weird because I thought it was all just like comic relief for a while I was like oh her whole family's moving in there it's funny then I was like is this still a funny joke no but I think they needed some sort of transition scene where I could feel like yeah. oh she actually likes having them around as kind of like a surrogate family right but they never did that. So then at the end, she's tucking them in and she just wants to take care of them. And I was like, hmm, yeah, this is odd because I wanted her to date and stuff. So I, and I didn't want her to die. And I thought she was going to die. Oh, I still thought so, she was going to die. I yeah. absolutely thought at the end where she takes her wine and the lantern and goes and sits out there. I was like, and she dies. She's not going to make it to I know. anything. She's just going to die. And that made me so sad. And then she didn't. To the well, actually, we don't even know if she didn't. We don't know that she doesn't die. Because well, well, oh, oh. Do we? That's no, we we don't know. We don't know. Actually, that's. Yeah. Does she die? We don't know. That's a major she, bummer. But she's at peace. And that's the. Yeah, she part. could she's die. At peace. So. I think I'd actually be okay if she does. Because maybe she does. Maybe we're supposed to think she does. Maybe we're supposed to question. Yeah. That, well, that would make sense to leave us with questions. But yeah, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. And there we go again. Okay. So, Monica, you were saying in the DA. Oh, in the DAR meeting. Oh, that scene was hilarious. I absolutely loved all of the D.A.R. darling stuff. Um, when Emily <clears throat> did not keep her language going. And we're back. We're back. Yes, we are just talking about the D.A.R. and that whole scene. <laughs> uh, I love that you slowly see her going through um, not wanting to do it anymore. She's over it. She's not that person. 
And then she straight up calls them out. She calls them on their bowl. And it was fantastic. What did you think? It finally happened. <laughs> I was glad to see her kind of finally cut loose. And it, some, it, it, all this artifice that had been built on top of her life. Mm-hmm. I thought so. I thought it was well done, and I, I thought it was interesting for her to end by saying, "Oh, you know, this died for me when Richard died." I was like, "Okay, I get that. that I get sense. that." That made a lot of sense. Yeah. So that aspect of it, I really, really liked. Yeah. Uh, Monica and Mom over in the chat room say that Mom says the lantern scene was about her saying goodbye to Richard and her old life. I can see that because she, you know, looks at the picture, the properly sized picture, and then goes and sits and so I, I could see it going either way. I could see be see it being her just saying goodbye, or it could be her just saying goodbye to Right. Everybody. So there was that. So the wedding. We all knew there was a wedding going into that that was that was one of the worst kept secrets in uh the gilmore girl world what did you think of the wedding you know i wound up thinking it was perfect yeah and i wasn't always on board with her being with luke Mm -hmm. but i kind of wound up channeling emily at some point i was like why aren't they married they should just get married not that i think people have to get married but i kind of thought maybe they needed to communicate and maybe that's what they they needed a push right so, and then the way the wedding played out, I have to admit, I got, te- I did tear up at the end Yeah. and I thought, okay, this is perfect. And this stupid show is going to make me feel these feelings, even though I had a feeling it would happen. Right. Right. I, I, I think I always knew that it was going to be Lorelai and Luke's wedding, but I kind of was on the, on the side of saying, haven't they done this already? Like, shouldn't this have happened in the 10 years or whatever, since we last saw them? Like... If I was them, I'd have just gotten married right after they got back together. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Monica over in the chat says, Kirk did something right. Loved the decorations. Yes. Wonderland was perfect. However, I find it very hard to believe that it was a Kirk creation. No. Unlike Uber. Uber, I believe, (laughs) to be a Kirk creation. (laughs) Oh, gosh. What did you think of Kirk through this? Because he was one of those characters that wasn't just in the group scenes. He had his own scenes. Was he always a favorite of yours or no? No, no. There were times where he would really grind, like, grind my, and be like, I can't. I just can't with Kirk. Right. But here, I really, the whole time, I was like, I love this character. I'm really feeling this. I'm glad he got a victory. Right. I might have been able to do without the, the film. The, the I, second short film. I think I could always I would, do without a Kirk film. <laughs> yeah, I could, you could cut that for me. That would be fine. But, I mean, he was quirky, and I thought he was great at the end. Uh, I was glad he got a victory. I was like, okay, okay, mm-hmm. good for you. I enjoyed the pet pig also. Oh, my gosh, it's cute, and I want one. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I love that it's the town that chipped in to buy him and Lulu a pig so they didn't have a child. That is the greatest reason in the world because that man should not have a child. Of any- oh, no, no. No. <laughs> I question Lulu frequently, let alone her. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Imagine and they had a great joke. Which- uh, they had a great joke about them on the couch when <laughs> I was like, okay, maybe that film was worth it for that horrible joke, but now I have that picture and I can't. <laughs> right. I, and I love how he was yelling at everybody for bringing in purchase food when literally every table is a different thing. It was like Taste of Stars. Yeah, Hello. yeah. It was fantastic. All right. So those final four words. Okay. Okay. What do you think? Um, I think, I, I, first of all, I, I was not expecting that. I was. And I'm so mad. That they tricked me because the whole time I kept thinking, to come full circle, Laura and I would have to get pregnant. But I was like, no, they would have done that already. And so by the by the fourth episode, I was like, nah, they're not doing that. No. And so then it just hit me out of left field. And I had no idea what the four words were going to be. Did, did you guess at any point? or? I didn't. Um, I... I had no idea what they could have been. To me, it could have been pour another shot. Like, 
pour me some vodka. Like that would have made just as much sense as what they did do. So yeah, I mean, I, it was perfect. It definitely brought everything full circle, but I think it says instead of ending, it makes you want more. It makes you want to see the next chapter. Yeah, and I was a little startled by the choice. I mean, I guess they, she says they planned this forever, but I was also like, is this opening the door to something more? Because I was thinking during the wedding, I was like, I'm okay with that. The, the, maybe they'll revisit these characters 10 years from now, but I'm okay, this is over, and I think this is cool. And then that happened, and I was like, you expect me not to want to know the rest of the story? Wait, and is it Logan's is baby? Family. It has to be Logan's baby. Has to be, right? I mean, we didn't see her. Even Paul, who we haven't mentioned, which is kind of convenient that we have not mentioned Paul. <laughs> <laughs> As they intended. <laughs> he's like a silence from Doctor Who. When he's not there, you forget Oh my about God. Him. He's a silence. I just, I'm curious as to whether people thought that was a mistake or they hated the pregnancy story. I didn't hate it as much as I think I would have a rushed romance or like mm -hmm. her. I didn't really want to see Rory get back together with any of those guys in particular. Although I kind of like, I, I kind of like Jess. So I kind of love Jess. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> way too much on team Jess. I don't think he got nearly enough though for how big of a character he is in the series. Not yeah. because of screen time or anything, but just of importance. I feel like he should have had more. Um, yes. Other people of importance that I feel should have been around more was April. You think? I mean... I know. She shouldn't have been in her dad's wedding. Right? I don't know. And she wasn't even there at the end. No. Which, I didn't like Emily not being there, kind of. Right. I kind of wanted them. To, but then I also thought, well, where is she? And that doesn't make sense, does it? Apparently, not if we're being. Or oh. Oh. Yeah, the separate lives doesn't work for me either. It was strange. It was strange. It was strange to see so much Logan, but it may have just been what you said. It may have been this is the actor we can get. I think it might. But have been we very didn't see much Jess. There was, you know, I liked that we got Dean at the end. Um, that was kind of bittersweet, but it was like, okay, that was never going to be a thing anyway. So you bye. Knew that's what it was going to be. You knew it was going to be, he's married. He has a life. He's happy. Ta-da. So there's that. But did you want her to hook up with any of those four guys? Three? Oh, well, I guess Paul. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I wanted her with Jess, but I wanted her with Jess way back when she went to visit him in Philly when she was trying to get revenge on Logan. That's where they should have started. Yeah. I think that's where them as adults should have started. And even if they weren't, you know, living in the same city and all of that, they should have had the Vegas relationship. And that would have made more sense. He always just made more sense for her to me. Like, he was more encouraging by far. I don't know. Yeah. I... I guess in a way, I think I want to give them, I, I want to applaud the show for not shoving her at any of them permanently because there wasn't enough time for it to make sense. And it had been so long. I mean, she's 32 now. So it's been a long time since she would have been with Jess that it would have been very weird. And I thought they were going to do it at the end there. I was like, don't do this last minute because that just feels wrong. But, but to drop the pregnancy bomb, are you kidding me? That's a soap opera move. Now, I don't think that's bad because I do like soap operas, but I, I I, that's certainly a, we're going to do another show move. A plot baby. Yeah. Literally a plot baby. So <sighs> I, do we get the Rory Gilmore spinoff? And how do you get that without Lauren Graham? You don't. That's the hard mm, part. No. Is, is, how do you do a spinoff of this show when they're so linked? The characters are so linked. I don't know. I don't think you could. Mm -mm. I don't think I don't think you could. I don't think anyone would watch it, and I think it would be weird because part of it would be Lorelai, Grandma Lorelai. Ooh. Um, Ooh, it's that's so tricks. weird. It's the new tricks. Oh, <gasps> that's crazy. That is so crazy. So I guess they're not going to do it, but that she wanted to end the stupid series that way, and she ended it that way. So, which which maybe you know, staying ten years ago. 
instead of her going off on the trail, she just said that. I mean, I don't know. I'm glad it didn't happen that way. I'm glad that the show's run didn't end that way because I would have felt like, oh, great. You know, what a letdown in a way. But, I mean, I was satisfied, but I was also like, you dropped this bomb on me and that's unfair. Right. You dropped this and ran? Not okay. Yeah. All right. Well, do you have any other little tidbits of fun you'd like to throw out there? Or do you think we covered all the big stuff? Um, real quick. Yes. They made such a big deal in the press about the Melissa McCarthy thing. What did you think about her eventual appearance? I thought it was good. I thought it was awkward. Um, yeah. Her, her missing the whole time was very awkward. And I, I mean, it left them open to use all those guests and make all those name drops and have that whole situation. But I think, I know that she said, you know, I have, I'll set up one scene, you have two hours, you're good. They could have done more than just one scene in two hours. See, that's what I thought. I think they could have easily filmed her in that kitchen like three to- three different outfits, plug her in here and there, and not have that other awful part of her life, of Lorelai's life. Like, don't make everything suck. Like, everything sucked before it got good. Yeah, and I think, I, I think she was too important to the show to just throw in mm-hmm. and then have this whole explanation about her being in the woods. And I'm like, okay, whatever. But this is a bigger deal. And for her to come in at the end, it felt really choreographed in a bad way. Like, oh, okay. And I just, and I don't know, I might have been picking up things from it because we, we had to know about how the sausage got made in this case. We had to know that she wasn't going to do it and then she did it and everybody but still I mean I'm glad that we saw her but it was a little strange I almost think it would have been better if we wouldn't have known I agree if they wouldn't have put that little tiny bit in the trailer it would have been a bigger payoff Mm -hmm. to have her thrown in there I think it would have been a much bigger payoff but you know it is what it is Who knew that she'd be the breakout star of the show? Who knew? Who knew knew that the (laughs) great chef who kept popping out kids would be the person to be so famous? It's crazy to me. It's it's unbelievable. And I mean, I've seen, they haven't really written anything good for Alexis Liddell. And I mean, I saw her on Mad Men. It was a small part. So I feel bad for her because she's gotten nothing that's been very interesting. She had the same of the traveling pants. (laughs) <laughs> mm, that's true. That was when the show was still airing, even in uh, what was it, Sin City? I think she. Oh, that's right. I I never saw it. So no, me either. I think she just sort of faded away a little, which is sad. But she's never. It been- is because the show was so good. Right. I don't know. Maybe something in the future. And then maybe had- some. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we had Lauren Graham and had Parenthood, though, which was fantastic. And I was almost in it sort of a reverse of this, almost expecting Alexis Bledel to make an appearance there. Just to have that little, because they had such strong mother-daughter relationships on both shows. Yes. Almost expecting her there as much as we had to have May on this. So... Yeah, it was, it was, I was shocked by all the shout outs to other shows, other people showing up. And also, it didn't really feel like, okay, this is breaking the fourth wall and I don't like it. Right. I don't know why, but they really, I guess they just have that spell on me anyway. Yeah, I, it all, I mean, it definitely felt different, but mm-hmm. very much the same. It, it had the Netflix filming style, but it was still Gilmore Girls. Does that, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. It had the Netflix camera angles and movements, but yeah. it's still Gilmore Girls. It was a Netflix production, but I was shocked at how much the town was there. I was like, wow. I thought I didn't know if I thought it was going to be too spare, or I was like, this is the same thing. They got it exactly right. So I guess they spare no expense at Netflix. So, right. you know. Well, and I'm not a big reboot person. I kind of am cranky, and I whine about it all the time, like all the time. But I was okay with this. And if they're going to do it, sometimes I'm like, okay, well, if you're going to do something, do, it good. do something like this to clean this up and, and give us something different. So It gave us closure. Yes, I guess. Closure, yeah. Kind of. For, for the main, for the original story, it gave us closure. 
Definitely. It gave us that. All right. So we do an arbitrary scale of ratings over here in the universe box land. So the Gilmore Girls is a year in the life as a whole. Out of 16 gin martinis, what do you give it? I would give it uh, 14 out of 16. 14 out of 16. Pretty high. Yeah. Yes. What could have pushed it up to 16 for you? Actually, I honestly think if they had, if they were not 90 minutes a piece, as much as I really wanted that, yes. it yes. may, it makes it harder to rewatch a little bit. And then I was like, oh, it's kind of dragging. So if they had just cleaned up one or two little points, but I mean, what, what do you think? I'm going to give it a 15. I think this is, this was, and that's really high for me. I don't ever get that close on anything, but it did everything I wanted it to. And yeah. I kind of am along the lines of the same. I kind of wish it was our episodes. I'd have almost done better with five one hour episodes instead of four. Like I get it. It was a year. It was a thing, but they were really long. They were really long. And like they my, were. my daughter kept coming up while I was watching. She's like, why are you watching a movie? I'm like, I'm not. I'm <laughs> watching a, a TV show. She's like, but it's, it's over an hour. I'm like, yeah, they're all over an hour. <laughs> so um, over in the chat room, Monica and mom, Monica gives it 14 while mom gives it a 12. Okay. So, that's, so they're, on, they're on the upward scale along with us. All right. So it's pretty high. That's pretty high, guys. I'm I'm surprised because when you get this much publicity for a thing, right. and I hate that about our modern world is you know too much and then mm -hmm. they think about it too much and it just but they they got it. They nailed it. They, they got it right. They, there yeah. was a few things they could have pulled, but it really in the grand scheme, it was as close to perfect as they could get for any sort of a reboot, I think. Oh yeah. For any sort of a reboot. Okay. So thank you so much for joining me on this lovely Gilmore Girls rant tonight. <laughs> Through all Thank you for having me on Universe Box. Yes. I couldn't have asked for a better way to spend my day after Thanksgiving. This was like a perfect dream. Thank you, Netflix. Yes, thank you, Netflix. <laughs> we greatly appreciate it. So where can people find you on the internet? You can find me at whatthefangirl.com where we blog about all kinds of different stuff. And occasionally we podcast about Once Upon a Time on Other Side of the Mirror, othersideofthemirror.com. We are about three episodes behind. <laughs> we may one day catch up. And we have a new podcast launching in December or January called 15 Minute Fangirl, which we'll be interviewing all kinds of creators from shows like Archer and Once just talking to them about what they're passionate about and what they actually do when they're making a show or a novel or anything. So awesome. we'll let you know about that when it comes out. Absolutely, because that is definitely up my alley. Up my alley. Now, for Universe Box, you can get a hold of us at contact at universebox.com. The Twitter and the Instagram are universe underscore box. The Facebook is facebook.com slash groups slash universe box show. And the voicemail number is 424-274-2352. Again, that's 424-274-2352. And I would like to thank Monica and Mom over in our chat room. And I uh, hope you guys will join us for the next Universe Box on Tuesday at 10 p.m. following Legends of Gotham, our Gotham podcast. So until next time, remember to think outside. Yeah.